good morning students once again welcome you all in the english class so today we are going to start the third part of the chapter indigo by louis fischer as we all know very well that mahatma gandhi was a man of principles okay and he believed in non violence humanity tolerance and all okay and then the theme of the chapter indigo you all know very well i have described it what the chapter indigo emphasizes the fact that effective leadership can solve any kind of problems without any harm to anybody this chapter deals with the way mahatma gandhi solved the problem of poor share croppers of champaran in a non violent way we have come to know at a very uh, at a very start what that this chapter is what an excerpt taken out from taken out from the life of mahatma gandhi by louis fischer okay so in that in this chapter in this chapter he has described how mahatma gandhi used non violence as a tool in politics okay so over here we have come to know that one more thing is what effective leadership mahatma gandhi's effective leadership had had solved the problem of indigo share croppers in champaran in bihar and we all know very well that champaran episode is a turning point in mahatma gandhi's life okay and this more this movement was launched in 1917 so first movement for satyagraha by mahatma gandhi the message of the story is what the story indigo highlights the unequal economic system that existed during colonial british rule it resulted in indian peasants suffering while the british planters exploited them it also highlights the importance of gandhi's decision to take up their case which exposed the unjust system because over there in champaran we have come to know that britishers forced britishers forced peasants to grow indigo and whole indigo was surrendered was uh, surrendered to was surrendered to britishers as a rent so indigo introduction to the chapter um just have a quick review in the chapter indigo the author describes author lee fischer describes the struggle of gandhi for the poor peasants of champaran who had to share their crops with the british planters this made their life miserable as they were forced to grow indigo according to an agreement means they were forced and we all know very well that with a uh, growing of indigo land becomes barren okay so this was the problem an overview is over here in this excerpt from his biography whose biography whose bi auto whose biography louis fischer louis fischer has written biography on mahatma gandhi entitled life of mahatma gandhi fischer describes a historic incident from the indian independence movement the champaran satyagraha of 1917 bihar it is a vivid account of british officials hostility towards the local population and their oppressive policies during their resume in india the except which except beta indigo describes how a seemingly insignificant incident triggered means a very small insignificant you can say insignificant incident champaran movement triggered the non cooperation movement for the first time in modern india it also highlights indigo's indigo problem been triggered the non cooperation movement it also highlights gandhi's strong strong activist agenda to instill confidence courage and self reliance in the ma masses in the masses as well as to better their living and social condition we will we will see in the last now here what is there that we have come to know that mahatma gandhi was attending what was attending annual convention okay in where in lucknow okay in the year 1917 we have gone through and over there a person approached mahatma gandhi his name was rajkumar shukla okay and 
Mahatma Gandhi attend the went to attend the annual meeting of the National Congress at Lucknow. A small farmer peasant named Rajkumar Shukla came to him. He requested Gandhi to visit Champaran. But Gandhi told Shukla that uh, first of all he did not know where what, where was Champaran and moreover he had an appointment in Kavanpur and was also committed to go to other parts of India. Shukla accompanied him everywhere. For weeks he never left Gandhi's side. Then he back fixed a date fixed it. Means he followed Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi everywhere. You can see here in the picture okay he followed mahatma gandhi everywhere finally mahatma gandhi was agreed why mahatma gandhi was agreed with the tenacity tenacity and story gandhi said okay page number 47 paragraph number <clears throat> Four, just see below line fix a date. Impressed by sharecroppers, tenacity and story Gandhi said, I have to be in Calcutta on such and such date. Come and meet me and take me from there. Months passed. Okay. Shukla was sitting on his haunches at, on his haunches at, at what? On his haunches at appointed sport in Calcutta when Gandhi arrived. He wanted till Gandhi was free. Then the two of them boarded a train for the city of Patna in Bihar. Then we have come to know that Shukla led Mahatma Gandhi to Rajinder Prasad's house. Why? I have already described it. Why? Because Rajinder Prasad was dealing case of Rajkumar Shukla and other peasants. And Rajkumar Shukla thought whatever he was unable to impart Mahatma Gandhi that could be imparted by Rajinder Prasad. But at Rajinder Prasad house what happened? At Rajinder Prasad house servants behave very badly with Mahatma Gandhi. Very badly with Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi was not permitted to draw water from well less some draw drops from his bucket pollute the entire source. So this made Gandhi what? Angry. Why? Because because he thought that same untouchability or caste system was uh, was uh, prevailing in India at that time. So he was angry and he wanted to collect more information, the reality of Bihar and Champaran. So Gandhi decided to proceed to Muzaffarpur. So we have to start page number 47. Gandhi decided to go to go first to Muzaffarpur, which was en route to Champaran, en route on the way, to obtain more complete information about conditions than Shukla was capable of imparting. He accordingly sent a telegram to Professor J. B. Kriplani, J. B. Kriplani, whom he had me, whom he had met and seen at Tagore Shanti Niketan School, and who was J. B. Kriplani? He was professor of the Arts College in Muzaffarpur, point to be noted. At that time, government officials were not given any permission to, to uh, give shelter or to show sympathy or to show, you can say, uh, to uh, show what uh, uh, warm welcome to the any home rule advocate. So, whom he had seen at Tagore Shanti Niketan School, the train, the Gandhi ji decided to go to Muzaffarpur, which was on the way to Champaran, to obtain the complete information. He sent a telegram to Professor J. B. Kriplani. Gandhi took a train to Muzaffarpur that arrived at midnight on 15th April 1917. Point to be noted. Means Rajkumar Shukla met Mahatma Gandhi in 1916, okay, in the month of December. And Mahatma Gandhi took four months to reach what? Champaran, Bihar, okay, and Muzaffarpur, 15th April 1917. Why he was in Muzaffarpur? Because he would like to collect more information. Kriplani was already waiting there with his students because arts college, he was professor in arts college and at that time, there was, uh, you can say, uh, Gandhi was in limelight. Why? Because Gandhi recent, Gandhiji recently returned from South Africa and and he had shown his, uh, you can say, he had uh, uh, shown his victory or he had proved himself, he had shown his confidence in South Africa. So, Gandhi was in news. So, that's why he, when Gandhi arrived at 
arrived at midnight 15 april 1917 kriplani was waiting at the station with a large body of students gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of professor malkani point to be noted a teacher in government school and gandhi said that it was an extraordinary thing in those days why it was an extraordinary things because because at that time means uh, when britishers were ruling it was an extraordinary thing means uh, government officers were not allowed were not have, were not allowed to give any shelter to any advocate moreover moreover government of government of uh, officials were scared of losing the job but still professor malkani sheltered him so it was an extraordinary thing in those days gandhi commented for a government professor to harbor a man like me means gandhi had a reputation gandhi was a lawyer okay and in smaller localities the indians were afraid to show sympathy for advocates of home rule fine so the news of gandhi's advent and of the nature of his mission spread quickly when gandhi arrived in muzaffarpur the news of gandhi's arrival and his mission nature of his mission means a uh, uh, reason behind of his arrival when spread when it was a sp- uh, when it was a spread in where in champaran and uh, villages near bihar okay so his mission spread quickly through muzaffarpur and to champaran share croppers who were waiting for mahatma gandhi from champaran began arriving on foot and by convenience somebody means some someone started on foot someone uh, by convenience to see their champion means they believed that mahatma gandhi would definitely would definitely do something for them okay and may and made themselves uh, and made their condition good so muzaffarpur lawyers called on gandhi to brief him then mahatma gandhi ji called all the lawyers to brief the situation of champaran they frequently represented present groups in courts why because those lawyers were dealing the cases of those peasants suppose in case rajendra prasad was dealing two three cases molana haq was dealing two three cases so so many lawyers were there who were dealing the cases of peasants and they were fighting for the cause of peasants but they were taking fees but they were taking fees okay and they uh, there was no uh, there was uh, uh, you can say uh, there was a uh, nothing benefit of you that those cases why because because in the in the rule who was uh, who was there british okay so they told him about their cases lawyers informed mahatma gandhi about their cases and reported the size of their fee gandhi chided the lawyers chided means scolded for doing something wrong chided the lawyers for collecting big fee from the share cropper chided means scolded that uh, why because lawyers were collecting big fee from the share croppers and share croppers who were already cu- crushed why to take fees with them so he said i have come to the conclusion that we should stop going to law courts mahatma gandhi uh, means uh, after after uh, taking a view of the situation he came on a result what i came to a conclusion that we should stop going to law courts taking such cases to the courts does little good means if we will take such co- cases to the courts does little good why because in the government whose uh, rule was at that time britishers and they were and they would never give justice to the farmers okay so taking such cases to the courts does little good where the peasants are so crushed and more our peasants are already crushed so after giving fee their condition become very miserable so where the peasants are so crushed with fear and fear is stricken okay fear was stricken law courts are useless the real relief for them is to be free from fear so mahatma gandhi told that we should make these peasants to be free from fear fine so we have done up to here now tomorrow we will understand that what will happen when mahatma gandhi reach champaran will britishers allow mahatma gandhi to solve the problems of champaran okay we will see tomorrow okay thank you have a nice day 
go through the chapter and try to understand okay thank you